Hello, grade three. All right, so now we are going to learn about another strategy we can use to make sure that we properly understand a story that we are reading. We are going to talk about predicting and inferencing. This week we'll focus on predicting, but we'll take a look at what inferencing means as well, just so we can make sure we're on the same page, okay? So we'll be using our thinking superpowers again. So what are predictions and inferences? So there are two more strategies, like I said, that help us with our reading comprehension, and they help us to decide what's going on in the story and what's going to happen next. So predicting is when we use evidence and things that they have said in the book to guess what's going to happen next. Inferencing is when we take a look and we read between the lines. So even if it doesn't directly say that a character is feeling a certain way or why things are happening or where they are, we are able to decide that based on what we've read, okay? So today we're just going to talk about predicting what will happen next. We'll start our sentences with things like, I think he will, or I predict she is going to, or next, I think they will, or they are. All right, come on computer. There we go. All right, so like I said this week, we will focus, focus on our superpower of predicting. So when we're making predictions, we can ask ourselves questions like, what will happen next? What makes me think that? And can I check to see if it's true? So let's start by having a quick visit with our friend, Pete the Cat. So I'm going to read you Pete the Cat. This book is great for helping us practice make predictions because it has some questions directly in it for us to ask, okay? So I realize this might be a little bit flipped, but you'll still be able to see the pictures and see, see what's going on, okay? So this is Pete the Cat, and it's called I Love My White Shoes. Here's a picture of a bunch of different colors of shoes. Actually, here, let's see if I can make it so you can see better. There we go, a little bit bigger, okay? All right, so here he is. Pete the Cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much, he sang this song. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. He loves them a lot. You can tell because he put a heart beside them. Oh no. Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. Oh my goodness. Right with his white shoes. So what color did it turn his shoes? So this is somewhere where we can make a prediction. We can look at the evidence that's already in the story to help us decide what is going to happen next. So he has white shoes and he has stepped in a big pile of strawberries. So it says, what color did it turn his shoes? So in order to decide this, I can take a look and see what color he's stepping in. Strawberries are red. So my prediction is going to be that Pete's shoes are going to turn red. Okay, so let's see what happens. So I said, I asked my question. I said, what color are they going to turn? I decided red and I said, what makes me think that? Well, the strawberries he's stepping in are red. And now I'm going to check. Look at that, we were right. Did Pete cry? Goodness no, he kept walking along and singing his song because everything is cool. So our prediction was correct. We guessed red. And we were right. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. So now he's happy that his shoes are red. Oh no. Pete stepped in a large pile of blueberries. So again, we're asking what color did it change his shoes? So let's think about what we used before to help us decide what color his shoes were going to change. We took a look at the color of what he was stepping in. So blueberries, it's even in their name, they're blue. So my prediction would be that his shoes are going to turn blue. Now we're going to check, see if we're correct. They did blue. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song. I love my blue shoes, I love my blue shoes, I love my blue shoes. Another deeper prediction we can make is we can say what's going to happen next. And we can think about what we've already seen in the story. So already I have seen Pete 
step in two different piles of fruit with his brand new white shoes. So what I could say is, because I've seen him do this and he's done it more than once, I think that he is going to step in something that's another color and change the color of his shoes again. So let's see if that's correct. Oh no, Pete stepped in a large puddle of mud. Look it, we were right, he did do it again. But what color did it turn his shoes? Well, I know that mud is ugh, yucky brown color, right? So let's see what color his shoes turned. Brown, and I could have guessed that, right? Did Pete, did Pete cry? Goodness no, he kept walking along and singing his song. He's really not bothered by his colorful shoes, is he? I love my brown shoes, I love my brown shoes, I love my brown shoes. Oh no, Pete stepped in a bucket of water. Hmm, and all the brown, and all the blue, and all the red washed away. What color were his shoes again? So we can think about this and think back to, and since it says again, sorry, we can think back to what his shoes originally looked like before these colors went. It's telling us that those colors are going away. So what color will his shoes be? I'm going to predict white because that's what they were before he stepped in any mess. White! But now they were wet. Oh no, did Pete cry? Goodness no, he kept walking along and singing his song. Yet he says rock and roll. I love my wet shoes, I love my wet shoes, I love my wet shoes. There he is marching along with his wet white shoes. The moral of Pete's story is, you guys are good at coming up with these, but this one actually tells us. It says, no matter what you step in, keep walking along and singing your song. And so what that means is even if things aren't going your way and it seems like everything's going wrong, just keep on plugging along because things will get better, okay? Because it's all good. <laughs> all right, so Pete helped us to talk a little bit about how to make predictions there. So now what we're going to do is we are going to make some more guesses. This time we're going to use a multiple choice option to come up with some guesses for some different scenarios, okay? So here are my scenarios and we're gonna choose some answers. So here is my story. It says Billy wanted to get a cupcake at the store, mm. but he did not have any money. So what do we think is going to happen next? Well, I'm going to take a look at the facts. I'm going to look at what's in here. So here are my options. He will go home, he will take a nap, or he will read a book. Now, because we don't know the next part of the story, maybe he does go home and take a nap. Maybe he does go home and read a book. But when we're predicting, we're looking at the evidence that's right in front of us. He's at the store and he doesn't have money. So he can't buy his cupcake. So the most reasonable prediction is that he will go home. So my answer would be A, because it doesn't say anything in this little story about him being sleepy and needing to take a nap or about him going to a bookstore or a library and wanting to read a book. They're talking about how he's at the store and he can't buy what he wants, so he will go home. Let's take a look at this next one here. Jan was playing outside. Then she felt a drop of water hit her head. So Jan will eat a cookie. It will begin to rain or mom will need some help. Hmm. Well, I'm going to look once again at the evidence, what's in this story. I know that she's playing outside and I know that she felt a drop of water hit her head. Nowhere does it say that she's hungry, so I don't think she's going to eat a cookie. It does say she felt a drop of water hit her head, right? And that happens when it starts to rain, so maybe that one. Mom will need help. Well, she hasn't really talked about mom. We don't know if mom's even home. Maybe mom's at work, right? It doesn't say anything about mom. It just talks about rain. So my answer would be B, it will begin to rain. Great job. All right, let's take a look at a couple more and then I have some for you to try on your own. All right, so now let's take a look at our friends in elementary, the first grade boys and girls, okay? So they walk into the lunchroom and they sit down at a table. They will begin to eat, the teacher will sing, or the kids will line up. I mean, the teacher might sing, 
but nowhere in this paragraph does it tell me anything about the teacher. So that's not the best prediction I can make. The kids, I mean, they might line up when they're done to maybe go outside for recess, but that's not the best answer I could choose. They've walked in, they've sat down at a table, they're in the lunchroom, so what are they going to do? They're going to eat their lunch. Hey, all right. Now, James had one orange, three muffins, five bags of chips, and seven hot dogs for lunch. That is a lot of food. So, do we think that what happens next is mom will go to work? Hmm. Nowhere in here does it tell me anything about mom. Dad will call a friend? It's not talking about dad either, is it? Hmm. His tummy will hurt? I mean, he's eating a lot of food. That is our best answer, C, okay? So what you are going to do now is I have some more task cards that look just like this, and you will have six. So we just went through four, and look how quickly that went, that went right? We, you will have six that you need to choose the answer for, okay? So you're gonna use your prediction superpowers, and I'll read them out loud to you just in case they're tricky to read, and then I'll show you how I want you to write them down. Actually, I'll show you that first, just in case you're listening to me while you're choosing your answers, okay? So you're gonna write them down like this. So here over on the side are my answers and how I did it. I wrote one and I put the letter A because A was our correct answer. Two, I put the letter B. Three, the letter A, four, the letter C. I put them in order. So in your book, your home learning book, or on a piece of paper, you're going to write Sunday, June 14th, 2020. I can make predictions. And you're going to write five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because that's those are the numbers that you're doing, okay? So then, once you've got that written down, you can pause it here until you've got it, got it written down if you'd like. Then we're gonna go back to our first page, okay? So I'll read these out to you, and then you're gonna write down the, the letter beside the number. So if you're on number five right now, you're gonna write A, B, or C, the one you think fits best, okay? So it says, Kelly's clock did not go off. She rushed to get dressed and eat an egg. Then she got her books and ran out the door. What do we think will happen next? She will be late, she will fly a kite, or mom will make lunch. So you can write down A, B, or C, the one you think fits best. Six, so now you're gonna move on to number six. Carson did not like her hair. It was too long and very hot in the summer. So choose A, B, or C. Dad will play golf, she will get a haircut, or she will take a test, okay? All right, next up, you have this one right here, number seven. So it says, Jess did not feel well. Her head was hot, her nose was runny, and her tummy hurt. So is she going to A, take a bath, B, call a doctor, or C, look for snakes? Now, I know that some of these answers are a little goofy, and I know a few of you are probably like, ooh, I want to write down the goofy answer. Please don't. I will mark it incorrect. Choose the best answer, okay? Number eight, the day was over. The teacher said, don't forget your homework, and I'll see you in the morning. What will happen next? A, the kids will eat candy. B, the stores will close. Or C, the kids will go home. So choose A, B, or C. All right, and your last two, okay? Nine says, Beth wanted to see the tigers and bears do tricks. She wanted to eat cotton candy and see clowns too. Where is Beth? Hmm, she's at school would be A. She's at the circus would be B. Or she's shopping would be C. So pick A, B, or C. And last but not least, Ben could not see well. It was hard to see things far away. So what will happen next? A, Ben will eat an orange. B, Ben will go on a trip. Or C, Ben will get classes. So choose A, B, or C. So you're just, like I said, going to write them down like this. You'll write five and then the letter that you've chosen beside it. Six and then the letter, so on and so forth till you get to 10. Then you're just gonna send me a quick picture to Class Dojo and you are done ELA for the day. We'll talk a little bit more about predictions tomorrow, okay? Have fun. This is my credit slide. Um, if you want access to any of these links, just let me know. Uh, this is the lady that created our task cards. This is the website of the people that wrote and illustrated Pete the Cat. And these are some credits for the people that helped make the little characters on the task cards and things like that, okay?